You're now listening to Cashed In. So back on Cashed In today, I'm excited about today because it's a little more of a personal and a real life story that we're going to be talking about. So as recent as of yesterday, uh, Michael and I had a conversation about a property in Florida, in Destin, Florida, which is near the Panhandle, near Panama City, mm-hmm. and uh, a place I'm not too familiar with, but uh, that that shouldn't scare you from potentially investing in a place that's new to you. So we were talking, and the math made sense, and uh, I just want to dive into it, really. So what we were looking at yesterday was it was two condos, mm-hmm. uh, two units in, behind a gated community, a beachfront property, you know, sounds fantastic, in the Destin area. And one of the... Uh, details that made this very enticing was there was two units for sale from the same seller and you would get a discount if you bought two at the exact same time so I get a call from Michael he's like hey like would you be interested in buying the condo that was above the one that he was interested in and that's kind of just how the story went yeah yeah so as you know you know I have a condo down in Madeira Beach which is kind of right in the middle of Clearwater Beach and St. Pete Beach. So I, I bought that as a second home. I use it as a as an Airbnb, okay, as a short-term rental. And it does really well. You know, as, as we've talked about, you know, the margins, you know, on those short-term rentals tend to typically surpass what you're going to get in a regular multifamily property. So as I was looking to expand my second home portfolio, um, I was looking in the Florida market, which is, you know, is, couldn't be any hotter. And I wanted to see which market would really f- check the box for, for multiple, multiple items. You know, one of which is, it, what are the short-term rental laws? You know, is there, a, is the there an ordinance? Thing. Right. Yeah. And, that's, er, yep. and you'll find that along the Clearwater beaches as well. Yeah. You know? It's pretty much saturated on the Atlantic coast, which is why we're even looking in the Gulf Coast. I don't know about you. But, yeah. But I yep. found that, uh, and if someone else knows different, please let me know, that Hollandale on the Atlantic side and Hollywood, Florida, are the only two near the Miami, mm-hmm. the greater Miami area that are allowing the short-term rentals because right. everything else is saturated, but go on. Yeah, so I think that that's the, the localities and what their laws are around short-term rentals, that's big. Like I know in Miami, I looked in Miami, it's six months and a day. So basically, you have to have a year-long renter yeah. you know, in there. So Destin was one of those areas that intrigued me for multiple reasons. Uh, it's, right, it's right in between Pensacola and Panama City, roughly. Right. You know, and so you have that you have Miramar Beach, really the the next beach over. So I was kind of looking along that like 30A corridor, which goes down into Panama City Beach. okay. And what I saw is, is that in terms of like beachfront property, which with these condos, it really is under where the rest of the state of Florida is in terms of what the values are. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, And the beaches there are among the most beautiful beaches really in the world, the really the white sand, the baby blue waters. Yeah. Uh, it, it's, it's really incredible. So I was looking, I was looking obviously as a destination where that ranked at. I looked where it ranked at in terms of like us travel mm-hmm. uh, in the state of Florida it was top 10 in terms of, in terms of a, a destination overall in Florida. Um, you know, obviously I touched base on the, on the localities and ordinances, and then it comes down to really the, the return, right? Mm-hmm. You know, so how are you gauging an Airbnb or a VRBO property uh, in comparison to, uh, so what are you going to get out of it? What's your margin is going to look like? So I typically go on to the platforms that I'm looking at. I look at comps, right? Just like I'm going to do for a regular, as you're, as you're going to do a property analysis on a regular single family home or a multifamily home, you're looking at, okay, how is this property going to perform on a nightly basis, on a weekly basis? What are the long-term rents going to look like if you get a month long renter there? Yeah. You know, and as you know, based on our conversation, it's, it, it, the numbers look good. They look, oh, yeah. They looked really yeah, good. Yeah, season uh, determines how much it's going to rent for a night, obviously. Mm-hmm. You know, in comparison to the one that you have in Madeira, uh, there is a degree, a weather uh, There's a factor there. Yeah, it's a little bit warmer down there. Yes. Yeah. By how many degrees? By what? Eight degrees? Five to eight degrees? Yeah, on between average? five and ten degrees on average, yeah. you know. Which you Which can is a feel. big difference. You can, you can definitely feel. Definitely me. Like, I have to be, you yeah. know, hot. And, like, I, I, if it's if it's a little bit chilly, like, it's it definitely affects me. Mm-hmm. So is that affects in terms of how much to charge for a night, right? Absolutely, you know. And a, a, as we talked about, you know, before the 
if I have a, I also have owned property in Ocean City, Maryland, which you're getting really four good months out of the year yeah. to really make your make your margins on because then you know you have really the end of october november december january february those are all v- vacant you're not making any money there yeah. but you still have your overhead whereas in destin okay it starts really around that february timeline and then it's going to go through labor day yeah. whereas in madeira madeira rents really all year round january is typically typically a slower month december a slower month but that, that weather, that difference is, is it also comes into factor. And then also, you know, travel, yeah. how are they going to get there? Right. right. Airports, the airports, yeah. you know, is there, is there nonstop travel? How many different airlines are going through Destin international? I mean, that those sorts of things definitely matter, you know, whenever vetting that out. Yeah. So I guess we could talk about overhead because that's mm-hmm. something that's going to affect if it's going to be a good buy or not in sure. terms of a second home, in terms of a short term rental uh, what your short-term rental goal. So this overhead in particular included the HOA fee. Mm-hmm. Um, it included uh, obviously taxes, insurance, things like that. Yep. Now being that it was a condominium, it's going to have different insurance than a single family home. Correct. And my question to you was, oh my God, what's hurricane insurance like? Yeah. And you're like, no, 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 it's under the HOA, you know, yeah. it's HB06, I think you said. Well, no, you're going to have to have an HS6 policy, uh, yeah. which is going to really be studs in. So like, you're going to have your, yeah. you're going to have your, uh, like your contents and that sort of stuff. Um, but yeah, like I've had, I've had, I've had experience, you know, I have experience right now. Um, I'm board member uh, for Madeira Del Mar for our condom- my condominium down in Madeira Beach. And, uh, you know, so I've really been learning a lot, you know, through that process to understand, you know, Mm-hmm. what all what's included in this you know yeah. and that's important people think that you know just because you're getting that nightly rent or you're grossing say you're grossing five thousand dollars ten thousand dollars over the course of a month on a property mm-hmm. people forget you know that the main one of the main differences is that you're paying the utilities oh you yeah know, you're paying the trash removal if there's depending on the market you know the snow you know you're doing all of these different little things and they add up if you have a pool it's a single family home you know, that has to be cleaned out. Yeah. And the lawn, that sort of stuff. Whereas you're in a condominium pro- complex, that HOA fee typically is going to cover, you know, the the, the, the master policy insurance. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, right. The landscaping. It's going to cover the water bill. Typically cable is included in that. You know, so although I, I never viewed it as a deterrent because for I this prefer, property, it's, right, well, for it. this property, it was like $830 a month, I want to say, for the. Yeah, it's uh, 2265 a quarter. Yeah, so your 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 ballpark around that, and but you have to look and see what's all included in that. Yeah, pools, and what all you hot can tubs. exclude, right? You're from your on the beach; it's beachfront. I mean, that's the biggest thing here. Oh, uh, huge, yeah. huge. So, so when, go ahead. I was just gonna say, so when you're looking at that, when you're yeah. looking at the comps, you can't really compare it to the inland properties. You have to compare it to the ones that are along the coast that are similar. Yeah, to it that. has to be. Com- it has to be alike for you to compare. Correct. It. And we were seeing. Um, I guess in the slow months, you would call the slow month in January. It would be just January. off season months. Off right. season would be what one? Th- it was we were seeing about one hundred and thirty bucks a night. Ballpark, right? Yeah, for similar properties, and upwards then, of like one hundred and seventy or something like that. Peak season, we're seeing like upwards near to four hundred dollars a night. Right, you yeah. know, and as I said before, um, I typically take worst case scenario. Mm-hmm. So I'm gonna do. I'm gonna. I'm gonna put those numbers at 250 a night. Does it make sense at 250 a night? Exactly, conservative. Uh, I'm. I'm very. I'm very conservative when I'm doing that. You know, because if the numbers are, are good at 250 a night, then everything else is gravy. Mm-hmm. I could assure myself a return at 250, then you know I'll be thrilled getting three, three fifty, four hundred. Yeah, and what made this deal so enticing was the asking price, which was. Right. On average, like three hundred thousand dollars less than what they're asking in Tampa right now, with the same sure, amenities. Granted, sure. you know the weather difference of maybe eight to ten degrees, but people mm-hmm. are still. This is a des- top ten destination place in Florida, where I'm saving. You know, my return is going to be a little bit quicker because right. my my per night is comparable, and I don't have to make as much of an initial investment to m- recoup. Right, and and I think one of the things that to that point, the key is. Obviously, you're in real estate. You know, you want the appreciation, you want the cash flow. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, and obviously, many other benefits, taxes, so on and so forth. But 
the key is, is okay, how much ca- cash is this going to bring to me? And what, what's, what am I going to make off this property? Yeah. And, you know, as, if, as what we talked about yesterday, the, the thing that was impressive with the second home financing is, is it's 10% down. Right. The property was, I believe, 415000 I think that we could have per leveraged unit. the other unit and ultimately maybe got them for three ninety five each. And I was going to leverage my license, but we, right. didn't, so, we didn't get that opportunity. So it's yeah. a, right. So, so your, your ballpark around 40000 down payment, right? Mm-hmm. If maybe I don't think typically in this market you're not getting any sellers assist or credits, right. but the taxes were twenty two hundred dollars a year on this property, whereas yeah. the one in Tampa is like eleven grand. You know? <laughs> yeah, it's not so, ridiculous. Yeah, that but that plays into your prepaid. And it's not on the beach. The one that's eleven thousand dollars a year is across, across the, the street, street from the beach. Across the street okay. from the beach. Yeah. So you know, I think that when you when we were comparing it, worst case scenario based on what the previous owners were doing they were through a property management company they weren't on airbnb so their margins were indicative of about a 35 percent rate of return which if you remember that's really my floor Mm -hmm. okay yep so you're about forty thousand dollars down payment which is equivalent to a two hundred thousand dollar purchase price on a multifamily unit up here in pittsburgh at twenty percent at at twenty percent down so you're again apples to apples similar amount of money uh, uh down yep Okay, the prepaids are probably going to be less with taxes only being twenty two hundred dollars in so, Florida. Less in Florida, Florida. that and the closing costs are, costs are going to be a little. Purchasing bit less. a property in Allegheny County is two and a half percent. Right. Transfer tax you mm-hmm. can't even get around. But go ahead. Right, right, and then you're splitting a lot of those costs in PA compared to Florida. Yep. Where a lot of the where the onus is on the seller down in Florida. Mm-hmm. So I was looking at it, and it's like, okay, even if even if my return is similar to a multifamily property. Yeah. Uh, let's just say apples to apples. It's they're both thirty five percent. Now I have a property that I could go visit in Destin, Florida. Yeah, behind Paradise. a gate. Right. With pools and yeah. hot tubs. And you can't do Yeah, exactly. You had all these amenities that were built into that. Yeah. So I think that, you know, when you're when you're looking at it, that's that becomes a big factor. Yeah. Right. It's the cash out of pocket. You know, how does that compare to a multifamily property that I'm gonna be able to buy? Right. And then ultimately if if all holds true and it's true and it's the same. I'm going to be able to, you know, use this property whenever I want yeah. down in Florida. Yeah, and it's going to be appreciated because I think. Yeah. And we spoke about it's lagging this, the rest of Florida. Yeah. We were talking about that yesterday. I kind of don't want to tell people this, but I think Destin might be the new boom. I think so too. Because the real estate is cheaper uh, in comparison to the hot spots, yep. which would be t- Tampa right now. Correct. And I think when people see that, that's like you have to be ahead of the curve. You're going to see this is right before this is the precipice right before it booms. It is, and that was how that was how Sarasota was years ago too. Mm-hmm. You know, there was limited there was limited flights in and out of Sarasota. Southwest didn't have flights years ago there. Allegiant didn't. It was really hard to get there. Now you could get a cheap flight to Sarasota. They have multiple flights in and out of there. You know, out of Pittsburgh, and so uh, I'm I'm hoping that uh, that we see that trend start to happen in Destin. I'm yeah, hoping once we buy once something. we buy something, right? Yeah. So that's gonna and once that happens, yeah, you know, that's gonna help the property values. Oh, appreciate you know, you're getting a, a appreciation. Ton. You're getting an increase in rent that you can ask for per night. Mm-hmm. If that yep. boom occurs, which I think it will. Right. Um so yeah, so the the deal uh unfortunately was too good because someone else purchased it before we could even get an yeah. offer on it. But I mean it was it was active and then we had the discussion. And then we did the math, which probably took, what, 45 minutes yeah. to decide whether this is a good buy or not. Yep. And then I reached out to the agent down there, and he's like, oh, we're under contract. Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah, you know, sometimes. And then we talked, too, um, about how do we even secure these good buys in Florida. Yep. And uh, do you want to elaborate on that? Well. Like what we said, how yeah, we should so just, get just, just get it under contract. Just get it under contract. You just get it. You know. Yeah. Whatever the property is. It goes back to anyway, being it. able to buy access. So if yep. we can buy our due diligence time, like granted, it might cost us maybe a couple thousand to buy the, the, the proper opportunity. And so be it. That right. for you to be able to cash flow as much money as the potential is per month mm-hmm. in that market, you might have to be a, be willing to take that risk. Yep. To buy that due diligence period. Right. So. Right. Yeah, I think that, you know, the, the key is, is, is ultimately, I'm not going to say that it's easy. You know, I, I think that I've been through the, I've been through it been so much. I've been on yeah. using the platform for, yeah. you know, six years now, five, six years now. So even before I was really kind of ahead of the curve in terms of Airbnb going mainstream. So I'm very comfortable and familiar with, with using the platform to identify whether this market really makes sense and the nightly rates going to justify that. So 
I don't want to by any means make it sound like it's easy no. to sit there and to to do that to do this. Um, it's a process, but it's a process. You have to, to go through it and you have yeah. to learn. Right. right, experience is the best teacher. It and this is. is something you're looking to get into. Do your own research. Uh, figure out how to do your own comparables, because granted, like someone like myself or you could easily pull comps for somebody. Right. But if you don't, if you're the one doing the investment, you need to understand what your trigger points are. Like, okay, I'm okay with it being a little bit farther away from the airport if I'm getting this amount per month or if it's behind a gated community or if it has access to all the golf courses or things like that. Like, you're the one that's going to know what fits your financial ideal profile. It, honestly, it's it's a benefit and advantage to yourself to be able to be educated and learning how to pull your own, com- own comps, which is what we'd be willing to teach you at some point. So, Exactly, exactly. You know, I think that... Um, you know, as we had said, you know, doing your research, doing your due diligence, you yeah. know, to really, truly uh, feel comfortable and confident, you know, in the decision that you're making, you know, and at the end of the day, it, it, it is a risk. Yeah. You know, there's a risk tied to it, you know, but um, whether you have somebody that's there to guide you through the process to really make you feel comfortable, that could definitely help mitigate the risk and mitigate your exposure, Mm -hmm. you know, around that. Because at the end of the day, not every market makes sense to have an Airbnb in. Right. You know, it might not cover your overall, your your overhead and your nut, so you might not be, you know, making any money on it. Yeah. You know, it might make sense to have a longer-term renter in there. You know, for for all that you know, I almost bought down in Florida at in uh, St. Pete Beach, which is where I I wanted to buy a single-family home down along those. I wasn't thinking about a condo, but I knew I wanted to be right by the beach. And, again, this is coming from myself, you know, I knew that I, I knew I needed to look into more, look into look the localities and what their, uh, short-term rental laws were, mm-hmm. you know? So, and that wasn't something that was brought to my attention, you know, down there, um, from my realtor. And so I had to ultimately go through that process myself. I, yeah, I wasn't your the, realtor yet. I, I, I just got licensed yeah. in Florida. <laughs> you will be. Yes. So, you know, I think that going through that process, and or going through the processes that I've already been through yeah. has helped me get to the point now where it's like, okay, I know what to look for. Yeah. You know, I know that, okay, I need to look for, for X at Y and Z, mm-hmm. you know, which ultimately is, is, is very valuable. Yeah. I think, um, really to anyone that's looking or ultimately to, uh, for myself when I'm now trying to expand my portfolio. Exactly. And it's, it's trial, it's trial and error. Mm-hmm. So the HOA restriction thing, I didn't know either. And I was looking into, you're the one that brought that to my attention down there. I was like, oh, this makes sense that they're going to put restrictions on people, you know, being able to rent out a place where people live full time for one night a week. And it's like a turnover rate. It's like chaotic and it can, you know, who knows who's going in and out of there. Right. right. Um, Because I was looking into, I have a condo near the airport here in Pittsburgh. And I was like, when I'm traveling around, you know, I want to be able to Airbnb my spot here. Right. And kind of just like capitalize, you know, make money while I'm gone type thing. But um, the HOA, even though it was uh, my community was built in the 80s, it has been amended. And they the shortest term that I could have a renter in, in there is three months, which is kind of a bummer. Yeah. See, that's the thing. You know, you have to look into the bylaws and, 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 and what was constructed, quite frankly, possibly decades ago. Yeah. And, you know, the thing the, the interesting thing down in Florida is, is that a lot of those play a lot of those beaches down there. Even the even the big high rise condominiums, they're, like in Clearwater, a lot of those big a lot of those big th- they're they don't they don't allow it at all. You know no. they'll put a they'll put a three month minimum, three month and a day minimum on there, so they don't want that constant turnover because yeah. it, quite frankly, a lot of those people go down there to buy a property and retire, or yeah. they're snowbirds. They want to be down there. They don't want to deal with all the tourists. You can't blame them. That's I don't There's blame them. I don't blame them at all. You know, it's, yeah. it's, it's it's quite frankly, it's good to know that though. Prior to yeah. me buying there and finding yeah. out, oh my gosh, I can't rent this place. Yeah, you know. So that's 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 the key there, um, you know. And I think that when you're looking at different markets, you know, uh, whether it's in Florida or, in my experience, in Ocean City, Maryland, I've vetted out uh, markets like Deep Creek, e- even even quite frankly in Seven Springs up here. I was going to mention that. Yeah. Because I have quite a few investors who are exploring that right now because it was mm-hmm. purchased by a new owner. It was yeah. Va- someone from Vail. Okay. And yeah, you're right. Vail Resorts bought it. Yeah. And uh, so they're kind of injecting money and, in, you know, uh, making it more of a tourist location. Yeah. So I'm like, hey, wait, it's like almost my backyard. Why am I not exploring that as an option? Yeah, right, right. Yeah, no, my cousin actually uh, works up there, and, you know, I was talking to him about that. And uh, 
it's an interesting dynamic that for sure there's going to be an influx of cash that's put into that, put into the, the hotel up there just overall, you know, and it'll really help, I think, create a boom for the values there and, mm-hmm. you know, as well as the businesses surrounding that. But I, I take, I, I look at that and I think, okay, can I rent, how, how, how what's the frequency in which I'm going to be able to That's, It's all math problem. That's it. it. You have it, to know. It, it, it's a, you have to know the equation though. Right. What are, what are the X factors? How mm-hmm. much are they requiring that I have to acquire this property for? What's the asking price? So right. how much, you know, am I going to have invested? Number one. Then it's how much, how much am I going to have per night that I'm going to be potentially bringing in? Mm-hmm. Okay. And then how much is it going to cost me to hold this property? Mm-hmm. Those are your three X factors. That's it. And I'll add another one on to that's, that, that kind of goes under the radar is, is furnishings. Yes. So in, oh, in yeah. Ocean City, the place came, a lot of those places, they come fully furnished. Mm-hmm. In Florida, it's, you well, know. That's why it, I got it, so it, excited it, yesterday because it was Well, they like, were coming fully furnished. Yeah, they're so, like fully furnished. I was like, oh my God. Like we could start having cash flow the yeah. day after we close. That's, Potentially. That's big. Yeah. So we were both super excited, but- Super bummed when he, when the guy texted me back. And the agent said that it was under contract. I mean, that's how you know it was a good deal. It didn't last long. It didn't. No, yeah. it was on the market for five days. And quite frankly, I don't know when when that actually went under contract. Uh, but both of them were both of them were done. Yeah, I think they really undercut the market. They really undersold themselves. Sometimes that's a strategy to get, to get a bidding war. Yeah, and then, well, that's true. And then that's people true. they go like, oh, "All right, I'll pay a hundred grand over," you know, as opposed to let me ask a hundred grand more and get like fifty thousand less. Exactly. So exactly, I mean, you can do that in different markets that are highly desirable like that. Yeah, right. So, but now we have a strategy where, like, if you see so, a seller down there, or myself, we see a seller selling two at the same time, and we can kind of leverage that as a discount for us acquiring mm-hmm. more units. Now yep. we know we have a discussion. Now we know that can happen, for sure. So that's kind of what we're targeting here on out, trying to find something else. Yeah, yeah, no, and I think that it'll it'll happen. We're obviously vetting out different different, not only just that market, different markets down there, um, you know, and really just incorporating that same that equation. You the know, equation, the and that's kind of like the equation is what makes me brave enough to make an investment. I've never right. been to Destin. Yeah, but because I me neither. <laughs> and we were going to the contract. <laughs> like, that's but but hey, that's the, that, I don't that, care if it's yeah. on the moon. If, yeah, right. If the money makes sense, that gives me enough confidence in pulling the trigger. Yep. That's it. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and 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 the I, I will say that when you buy when you buy your first short term rental. Like when you buy a multifamily property, you know either you're buying the current cash flow or the projected cash flow. Mm-hmm. Okay, and, and you feel good with it. it. It it meets your mark. You make your you make you at least make your monthly nut, and then you have your return based off of that. Right. When you're buying a short term rental, you really don't know. You have projected numbers. You don't know whether or not you're going to have a month that's that you don't have a booking for. Right. You don't know. You don't know what you're actually truly going to get. You know what you think you're going to get, which is exactly why I undercut my projections prior to doing that. Yeah. But ultimately, again, if you're experienced enough and you've been through it and you know, yeah. you know what to look for, and that uh, it, it really is going to be able to mitigate that risk factor associated to it. Totally, and it's all once again. I mean, I think we preach this every episode, but it's mindset. I was confident in, in the algorithm that we have, and I'm like, all right, my mindset is it makes sense. I'm going to pull the trigger and not miss out on the potential of the return that was fantastic. I mean, it, like you said, you touched on how it was just a property manager mm-hmm. renting it out. Mm-hmm. And the fact that we could have had control over an Airbnb situation, it would have exponentially increased that rate of return monthly. Well, some people want it to be totally passive and I get that. So I'll use the example in, in Ocean City. I I purchased my I purchased a condo down there probably five, six years ago. And the when I was vetting out different condos and it was very different market down there then as it is now. Now there was six hundred to seven hundred listings on the MLS daily, average daily down Jeez. there. Now there was I think nine there's an average of like ninety five to hundred. Like the inventory is just has just tanked, Supplying you know, demand. it's, yeah. yeah. And the, and the values of sword, which is why I sold mine uh, last September and now I can't find anything else to buy. Mm-hmm. But, uh, I was talking to people that had owned the con the, that had owned in that same building and they were saying, don't even expect to break even, you know, the, you'll, you'll when come did they less say this? What year? This was in like 2018, so I want to say. So they were saying, <laughs> don't expect to break even. Yeah. You know, everyone went through Coldwell Banker down there. 
And, you know, I, I said, you know what? No, I, I could see past this. Like, you know, I think that with Airbnb, I think that I'm going to, instead of paying 20 to 25% for someone else to manage my property, I'll pay 3% to Airbnb. I'll do it myself. Mm-hmm. It's a little bit more time consuming, but I was able to control what the nightly rate is. Okay. And I was able to control what the minimum, minimum nightly stay is. And ultimately I ended up dwarfing every single unit in that property in terms of what my nightly rate was in return. And ultimately I had a couple of people thank me because they saw my listing on there and they said, how did you get that? I, I, you know, Cobalt Bankers only, they're only charging 170 a night. You're charging $300 a night. Yeah. How did you get that? I said, look, the, 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 uh, the clientele's there. People are willing to pay that. Mm-hmm. Ultimately I took the risk. I let theirs book before mine. Mm-hmm. And then ultimately guess what? There's no nothing else available, so now mine came in, and people were willing to ultimately pay that. Yep. You know, so again, it's a risk, it's a mindset. I've been more in tune, and I've been more uh, willing to take that risk mm-hmm. compared to others. Yeah. Which ultimately has led to good returns, you know, and ultimately led to the the position that I'm in right now to be able to scale in the way that I'm capable of doing now. Totally, and that's a very interesting ideology like who gave you that inspiration to to let me jack up this price a little bit not saying it wasn't warranted i'm sure your unit was beautiful and mm-hmm. the location was fantastic but who gave you that idea to let me just sit back let those other places book and because i'll be the only one available let me see if i can get premium pricing like who gave you that was actually my experimentation it was, well, it was, so it was it was that was my thought process but i did go in and i looked to see what others were renting for but the problem was is that uh, there was no other, pro- there was 18 units in that property. No other property, no other unit in that property was being listed on one of these platforms. They were all going through a private property management company. Oh, so it didn't have the exposure. So there was, right. And now, <laughs> now ironically enough, most of those properties that are in there, they're on Airbnb now. Wow. Yeah. Oh, damn. Okay, that's a big deal. Yeah, so it was it was an interesting turn of events. Um, I didn't receive any thank you cards, though. Oh, that's some bullshit. You, know? <laughs> you should. I should. I mean, you definitely helped with the, the value when you sold it. Yeah, you definitely it sold did. it more than what you bought it for. Well, and that was one of the things, you know. They had said that, they had said that and again, you have to put it into, con- into context. Um, what they said I was going to get compared to what I ended up making the last year on that property, it was probably three times higher, you know, than what they had said in terms of gross annual rental, uh, rental income, Whoa. which when I had listed the property for sale, the agent, a, agent actually, I had other agents that were, uh, they wanted proof of rentals. They wanted me to print out the Airbnb statements, the Verbo statements and any other reservation that I had because they almost didn't believe what I was getting. No way. So I had to print that out. I had to show them, you know, look, this is what I was able to get because for a two bed, two bath down there, it was really unheard of. Mm-hmm. So that was why it sold within a few days down I there see. because of that. Wow. Part that's, of the reason why. But. That's pretty incredible. But see, like you said, it comes down to mindset. It fit the algorithm. It worked out. Right. And that's my, yeah. And it was, it fit the, it was the mindset and it fit the algorithm that I use. Mm-hmm. Right. So that's ultimately the case. So everyone has their different strategies around it. Mine seems to have, have worked for me in multiple scenarios, um, which is why it's really become a plug and play. So now I vet out more of the market. So now I have my patented algorithm that I use. Yes. I'm willing to share. But um, ultimately, that's kind of the process in which I'm going through when I'm vetting out a market for short-term rentals and how I'm vetting out individual properties within those markets. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So uh, your patented algorithm, um, it's interesting you bring that up. Because eventually, you know, that's, we have a goal here on Cashed In. And it's not to keep our secrets, it's to share them and to show other people how to become, you know, owners in real estate, how to uh, acquire ownership and things like that. So I think it would be very wise if you stay tuned for the next episode uh, that I kind of want to tee it up to, uh, that we're going to be uh, dropping some knowledge on what we're going to be doing next in terms of uh, consultation, being able to have access to us, and that'll all be... um, developed and and basically i'm losing words here pause it what what number are we on so i can redo that yeah okay so it's perfect time for closing yeah you were you were going good you said develop i would say to help develop a personalized a personalized plan that meets individual meets it that meets each individual's goals as it relates to real estate got it so what we're trying to accomplish is to create a relationship with people who listen to us. And what 
that looks like is allowing each individual plan to be drawn up with you personally, um, one-on-one consultation, things of that nature. So that's going to be uh, dove into more detail in the next episode. So stay tuned, and I'm very excited to share that information.